This game goes in rounds, which are called tricks. In order to win a trick, you simply have to play a card from the suit, and it's the highest number from that suit. So as an example, if I play the six, then my opponent has to play a card from the same suit. In this case, the 10 beats the six, and they're going to win the trick. Now, if you look at the top left corner of the screen where the mouse is, what you can see is that the opponent has won that trick. Whichever player wins the last trick gets to lead on the next trick, which means you get to select which card is played first, and then your opponent has to select a card from the same suit. As an example, I'm going to play the blue 10 key card, which means my opponent has to play from that same suit. One strategy that I find works very well in this game is depleting a suit of cards. This is my opening hand for one of the rounds of the game that I'm going to play. Please note on the right hand side of the screen I only have two orange cards. So as a strategy, what I'm going to do is deplete these orange cards. And what that means is when my opponent plays an orange card, I am unable to play an orange card, which means I can play a card from any other suit. If you look, the trump color is blue, and I have many, many blue cards. So a really good strategy, get rid of your weakest hand, your weakest suit, the one with the least amount, and then that allows you to play the trump suit. So I'll go ahead and show you how that works. Here's an example of depleting my hand. I'm going to open with playing this 10. Now notice that the opponent has played an orange card. I'm going to play my last orange card. And what this allows me to do is that any time from this point forward an orange card is played, it allows me to play anything else. And so that gives me a huge advantage because the trump suit is blue. Here's a good time to talk about the trump suit. In this game, I was able to get rid of both of my purple cards early on in the game. And this gives me a great advantage. I have now five cards in the trump suit, which is orange. And what that is going to allow me to do is win a lot of the sets, especially if my opponent plays the purple card. Here's a perfect example. My opponent has played a purple card, and it will allow me to use a really small orange card to win the trick. So in this case, I'm going to simply play the two. Even though the two is lower than the four, it's from the trump suit, so it's going to win the trick. Scoring in this game is non-linear. You do not get one point per trick. As an example, here is the scoreboard up on the screen. And as you can see, you get a certain number of points for how many tricks that you have. Now the first thing to note is at the top of this, in the zero to three range, if you don't win four tricks, you win what's called the humble win, which means that your opponent has really just kind of dominated you, has, has really taken over the game. In that case, you win six points and your opponent gets zero. So as you can see at the bottom, there is the greedy. So if, let's say your opponent gets 10 and you get zero, you would get the six points, even though you didn't win any well, you know, you'd win very few of those tricks. So in that case, you'd win three tricks and your opponent would win 10. So in this range, be very careful to look at these two. Now, it's very easy during the course of the game to win, but I think it's even harder to lose all of the sets. So obviously, every once in a while, you're gonna get these really awful hands and the opponent is gonna start and they're gonna start leading all the tricks and just really dominate you over the course of the game. In those instances, and it's fairly rare, you can play to lose and actually win the set because you're going to get six points from it. Now, most of the games are going to kind of fall into the middle here where you're getting, you know, anywhere from like six to nine tricks. I think that's pretty common for you. Now, if you get into the seven to nine region, that's kind of the sweet spot where you want to shoot for in most of the games. So just remember that the scoring in this game is non-linear. It is kind of cool, it is kind of exciting. It's, it's something that you can change your strategy around a little bit to win some of these humble you know, wins. It's also easy every once in a while for the 
AI or an opponent to take over and they can um, you can lose by being greedy because they just lose every single set so the computer's really good at doing that back to the match now after we have kind of taken a quick interlude to talk about scoring I want to continue back on our match and kind of show you that we're a little bit in the danger zone if you look at how many tricks that we've won we've won four tricks and our opponent has only won one trick now we can lose by being greedy if our opponent doesn't move to this first position right here so they have to have four and I'm kind of clicking on this spot several times so you can see it if your opponent doesn't have at least four uh, tricks won by the end of the entire set you are going to lose by being greedy so you're going to get zero points and your opponent is going to get six so we kind of have to be careful moving forward we don't want to be too crazy we don't want to be too greedy so in this case we might sort of move forward and try to throw one of the sets so maybe i'll put a four down and see if the opponent takes the bait so they do and they just want a trick now they're going to lead um, with orange and in this case we're going to go ahead and, and win that trick then we're going to try to move back to losing another set so that we can maintain the flow of the game i'm going to go ahead and decline this all right so they took the bait again and now they are at three tricks so we just need essentially um just one more trick for them to win so i'm going to throw this set so that we don't get a greedy win now what's great about this is that we can sort of um, regain this we can play the witch which is going to throw the trump suit so we're going to win this set and now what we can do is um, kind of control the rest of this. I'm going to go ahead and throw the, well, you know what, I'm going to throw the 11. See if we can weed out some of the orange folks. Right, we took the witch from them. Uh, let's see, now let's go ahead and let's run the six. Right, so they won that set. And then we're going to close that one the time. So this is going to show us the scoring. So they definitely, we were victorious. We had a lot of tricks that we won, plus we got one of the treasures. Now the opponent was defeated, really didn't have all too many tricks that were won. They did get one treasure. So this difference of 7-3, to three, that's a pretty solid win. And that's kind of where you want to be. If you can play the game and be in this range, you're going to quickly build up to 21 points. The 11 card is known as the Monarch. When you play this card, it will force the opponent to play their highest card from that given color. So in this case, if I play the 11, my opponent has to play an orange card and they have to pick their largest orange card in their set. The exception is that they can play the one, otherwise known as the Swan card, from that corresponding color. So I don't have obviously the orange swan. So I'm gonna go ahead and mouse over the swan. So in this case, they could have played the one orange card as well. Now the swan is an important card because even if you lose that trick, it gives you the lead on the next trick. So what's fantastic about it, and I'll go ahead and illustrate this. I'm gonna go ahead and play the swan. Pretty much anything's gonna beat that card. So obviously the 10 beats the one, they win the trick. But what I get to do on the next trick is I get to lead, so it allows me to sort of regain the initiative and help me play the next round. Using your 11 cards is a good option, especially toward the beginning of the match. Since your opponent has some decent cards in their hand, use your 11s to bully them and get rid of uh, some of their stronger cards. As an example, I'm going to go ahead and play the 11. It's going to force them to play an orange card um, that's also of the same suit. And then I'm going to follow it up and do it again. 
with the purple one. So by doing this early on, I have forced my opponent into losing two of their stronger and heavier cards. Now when you play an 11 and you're not leading the trick, it doesn't actually trigger the special effect on it. You have to be leading in order to play the 11's special effect, which is it forces the opponent to play the highest card of that same suit. So just understand that using 11 is great, you can sort of be defensive with it, but it loses its special ability unless you're leading the trick. The next card is the Witch, which is an extremely powerful card. When you play the Witch, it allows you to change the color of the Witch to the Trump suit. So in this case, if I play the blue Key Witch, it's going to change it to purple since purple is the Trump suit. So as an example, when I drop the 9 card, which is the Witch, it'll convert to purple. And then since it's the Trump card, it will allow me to win the hand. Now in that case, it wasn't that big of a deal because I was going to win that trick anyway. But you can use the Witch to take some tricks that you really shouldn't be winning. The Witch is a very powerful card, and it's very important that you play them wisely. The 7 card is known as a Treasure card. If you take that trick, you immediately gain one point. As an example, I'm going to play the eight. I'm going to win the trick, and I'm going to immediately gain one point, so I went from eight to nine. Treasure is an important way to gain points. In the middle of a match, there are a maximum of three treasure cards that can be played per round. Here's a quick tip to look out for when you're playing the game. When your opponent leads with a somewhat lower card and you have the treasure card from the corresponding suit, I recommend playing it. So in this example, my opponent has played the five orange. I do have the seven treasure card actually in my hand. So this is a great time to win a trick and gain a point. So if you notice at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, I have zero points. I'm going to go ahead and win this trick using the 7, and I'm going to get a trick and a point at the same time. So this is a good way to spend your 7s. Always be on the lookout for when they play somewhat of a lower card in that suit. Go ahead and take it with the 7 and get a point. The 5 card is a pretty neat card. When you play it, it will draw a random card from the draw deck, and then it forces you to discard a card. So in this case, you can get rid of something that's kind of low. Uh, so I'm going to pick this orange three card and get rid of it. And what that allows me to do is kind of prune my hand and get rid of something that's kind of low and retain something that's bigger. So it can give you a little bit of an advantage when you play the game. One card that I enjoy spending early in the game is the five. And the reason behind it is that you get to draw a card from the draw deck and oftentimes you're going to get something that's a little bit stronger um, so in this case i have the ability to get rid of some low cards in my hand the ones i kind of like to keep because i can regain the initiative but twos are always a great card to dump and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go for a suit in which i have just sort of a low number of cards so i'm going to go ahead and look at orange and say, hey, if I'm going to deplete a suit, let's focus on orange, and I'm going to get rid and toss this too. By using this strategy early on, you can get rid of some sort of junky garbage cards in your hand, and then you can use that to sort of build up your hand presence and deplete a suit at the same time. Another tip is to use your threes effectively throughout the course of the game to kind of switch the suit and switch the decree to something that you have a lot of. On the screen you can see I've got a ton of blue cards. Now the trump suit, the decree suit is orange. In this case though, I, what I can do is I can take the fox card because I'm depleted on purple. I can't actually play any purple cards. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and throw this in and I'm going to swap with blue and although my opponent is going to win that trick, 
Now I'm kind of power loaded for blue, and I can do a pretty large amount of damage to my opponent because the trump suit is now blue. So I have a huge advantage when I start um, to play this. So as an example, since I'm depleted, now I can deplete orange to make it even easier for me to play blue cards, and I can win by using the witch. So in this case, my opponent is kind of in bad shape because A, they have won three tricks, as you can see at the top, but I have a massive amount of board presence and board control. Having a ton of these blue cards, it's gonna be very hard for the opponent to regain the initiative in this game. Next, what we're going to do is make sure that our opponent just wins one more trick. So I'm going to toss this blue card. And they're going to take it with an 11. Now, from this point on, the only thing that I can play are trump cards for the rest of the match. So this is a really fantastic way uh, to maintain control of the game. So I can just toss a three card to win this trick. I'm going to regain the initiative. And since my opponent has spent their 11, and I remember them doing it, now I can just kind of run through the rest of these tricks, for the most part, very quickly. And I'll have a huge advantage over them. So for the most part, I'm going to be winning um, the vast majority of these tricks until the end of the game. I'm going to build up a ton of points. Notice my opponent really doesn't have any blue cards left. And this match is pretty much over. Now if you want to look at the score, this is a pretty solid win with six points from tricks and then two points from treasure an eight to two difference that's a pretty hefty win and that's pretty solid so putting everything together you deplete you make sure that you take control of the board and then you just run the board and uh, do your thing hopefully you've learned some cool tips and tricks when you're playing the fox in the forest i really enjoyed this game i felt that it was fun it's sort of a, a light easy solitaire game that you can play. I think a lot of the special cards have and add a lot of depth to the game and I think it's a lot of fun. It's very well paced, it's very very quick, you can play uh, multiple matches very very quickly. I think that by learning some of the tips and tricks that I've shown you it'll at least get you to be able to dive into the game. There are several solo challenges that you can perform, there's multiplayer and then you can just play against the AI. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Thanks again for your time and as always have fun gaming.